Former. I want to play a game. For years you have made subpar internet videos about my work. Subpar? But tonight, you will make the ultimate video. Will you hit yourself in the head with a hammer until you die? Or make a 25 minute video about the entire lore of the Saw franchise? The choice is up to you. You're asking, is the the point of this is to is to is to show that I have no clue about the whole series. Is it's that to see if you, it's to see if you're desensitized to the violence. I'll give you one more. The first Saw film opens with a glowing key inside of a bathtub that we later learn is occupied by none other than Adam, who is a photographer, a voyeur, as Jigsaw calls him, that was taking pictures of random people in their private lives. One such person is Dr. Gordon, the man on the opposite side of the room who is a doctor that was attempting to cheat on his wife. Uh, both of these men were not appreciating their lives in the opinion of the Jigsaw Killer, who is a notorious serial killer that murders people uh, in order to improve their lives. He also cuts puzzle pieces out of their skin in order to represent the fact that they were missing a component for survival. By the end of the film, we learn that the man on the floor in between these two men was in fact the, the Jigsaw Killer, a man by the name of John Kramer who was dying of cancer and wanted to give people the chance to truly experience and appreciate their lives prior to their own deaths. Uh, during the movie, we also see several flashbacks to other Jigsaw victims, uh, including but not limited to a man who has to walk through razor wire uh, before a door closes and will not reopen until the police open it later on. Um, a man who is covered in uh, a flammable substance smeared on his body who must walk on glass in order to read a combination for a safe while holding a candle. And of course, Amanda, a character that will become very important in this franchise, uh, a woman who wears the iconic reverse bear trap, uh, a trap that was the initial premise of the Saw short film that uh, indie filmmakers James Wan and Lee Winnell made in Australia and was picked up by American producers which turned into Saw. Fans consider that film Saw 0.5 uh, and it basically follows the same type of structure as the bear trap. Amanda is one of the only Jigsaw victims that actually survived and while in police custody she does claim that Jigsaw improved her life in some capacity. Um, at the end of this film, we learn that Zepp, who is uh, a man who worked at the hospital along with Dr. Gordon and who also knew John Kramer, a.k.a. Jigsaw, uh, he was poisoned and therefore needed an anecdote which would only be given to him by Jigsaw if he kidnapped Dr. Gordon's wife and daughter and uh, put, for some reason he put a stethoscope on them and held a gun in front of their face. Uh, I guess because he was just a weird man in general. Uh, but by the end, Danny Glover, who plays a cop whose detective partner was killed by Jigsaw, uh, kills Zepp, uh, thinking that he is the Jigsaw killer, 
but then Hello Zap, which is the iconic theme song from the entire Saw franchise and was created by Nine Inch Nails composer, composer excuse me, Charlie Clouser. Charlie Closer? Clouser? Yeah. Uh, it plays and it's revealed that the Jigsaw Killer is actually lying on the floor and is John Kramer from earlier in the film. Dr. Gordon's family is completely okay. He thinks they're going to die, and so he ultimately saws his own leg off, as the title would suggest, uh, in order to go and save them. Um, Adam, however, does not escape the room. Jigsaw says game over, and the door is slammed in his face. Thus, we end Saw 1. Saw 2 begins with a man with a uh, Venus flytrap trap on his head, very similar to the reverse bear trap. He um, must dig a key out from behind his eye, which was planted there while he was under sedation and given surgery. He does not ultimately go through with cutting his eye out, and so therefore it clamps on his head and he dies. When the police investigate uh, his particular crime scene, there is a note on the wall written for a specific police detective played by Donnie Wahlberg. And likely from this point on, with the exception of Hoffman, I will not mostly remember any of the character names because there are far too many of them to go around. Uh, the detective uh, has a rough patch with his son. He yells at his son and from this point on he no longer sees his son in the movie because his son is abducted by Jigsaw placed in what is referred to as the house trap where a group of supposed strangers wake up in a house filled with poisonous gas and they must go through each room like a haunted house and uh, get anecdotes for themselves. Uh, there are various characters inside of the house that have to do varying things, including Amanda from the first film who makes her return because apparently she still wasn't appreciating her life. Uh, the alternate plot is the Donnie Wahlberg detective trying to convince Jigsaw to tell him where his son is, but Jigsaw wants to simply uh, spend his time uh, talking to Donnie Wahlberg, trying to rehabilitate him and giving us a backstory on Jigsaw, where we learn that Jigsaw was trying to uh, drive off a bridge in order to end his life. It didn't work, and therefore he had a newfound appreciation for it. Uh, we also learn that the detective's son will remain okay in a safe and secure place so long as the detective follows the rules, a motif from the first movie that carries over to this one. We cut back and forth between these two plot lines until they come to a head when there are only three people remaining in the saw house. The muscle dude, Amanda, and the detective's son. The muscle dude needs to know the numbers on the back of his neck in order to open the safe with the anecdote, an antidote, and what did I say, anecdote? Antidote for the poison gas. Uh, but Amanda won't tell him it, so he simply cuts his neck, uh, the back of the his neck pull, rips the skin off, and uh, Hello Zep begins to play again. And... Uh, it does a bunch of crazy cuts and stuff, as, you know, typical early 2000s Saw, thank you, does. And then, um, we cut back to the detective who beats up Jigsaw and breaks one of his fingers and makes him leave where the police are in the warehouse to go to where his son supposedly is. But, big twist, uh, during the, the chaos is that the SWAT team rolls up on where they think the detective's son is, uh, wherever it is. I'm I, I, I'm I'm try, I'm still trying to figure out what what they they wind up at this place and I don't know how they didn't see um, them roll up I guess they put it to a different location and uh, lo and behold the events of the saw house did not take place at the same time as the rest of the movie in fact they were pre-recorded by the time Jigsaw gets there with the detective uh, Donnie. 
He goes inside and is attacked by the pig face, which I should have mentioned is a character from the first movie who is Jigsaw in a pig mask. But in this movie, plot twist, it is actually Amanda in a pig mask who says the game over thing and slams the door on his face. The detective's son is found to be in a safe, Badoon Ching, uh, where he would have been unlocked automatically after the ex ex expiration time that Jigsaw told him. <coughs> I'm dying here. And the final shot of the movie is Jigsaw sitting in the car and instead of it zooming out, it, like literally the frame just gets smaller on the screen until it disappears. And that is the end of Saw 2. Oh my gosh, how many more do we have? How many more are there? Saw 3 uh, is the last one that had any involvement from the original creators. Lee Winnell wrote this one, I think, and then he dipped and said bye, and he went off to do um, Dead Silence and Insidious and other movies. <sighs> Saw 3 opens with... Hang on, let me think about this. Saw 3 opens with something. Something happens at the beginning of Saw 3. Jigsaw is getting brain surgery. Doesn't it open with the dude with the chains all over him that blows up? Or is that 4? Man, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already slipping. Here we go. Um... Well, I know Jigsaw gets brain surgery, and I know that Amanda's there, and a lady's kidnapped, and I know that the main story is a man whose son is killed by a, uh, a, a drunk driver who winds up on the rack. But there are other characters. You have the eyewitness and the judge and various characters who... Um, let this man walk, walk away scot-free, and this man has a chance to either get revenge or forgive. And that's kind of the, the story of this movie. I think it's a fine story, but it just isn't, it isn't super, it's not as compelling as some of the other ones. Uh, but the, the B plot is that Jigsaw is getting this brain surgery, that I mentioned that Jigsaw gets brain surgery because he has cancer. And, um, there's a lady that's frozen really quick, a guy that gets pig guts, and then there's the rack. Uh, uh, they're trying to get a key out, and instead of, like, pulling, uh, his shirt to get the key and moving out of the way, the judge guy walks right in the, the line of the shotgun and is killed, even though he survived his, uh, pig guts trap. Um... At the end of the movie, there's a twist that the drunk driving guy's wife was the brain surgeon and Amanda was ultimately getting tested and she failed and she gets shot by the guy and then he kills Jigsaw with a, with a spinning saw blade and Jigsaw dies but not before swallowing a tape covered in paraffin wax. Uh, and that's Saw 3. Saw 4... Hang on, I got this. Saw 4 opens with... Um, Detective Hoffman... Who is important too... Finding... They're doing an autopsy on Jigsaw... And he finds a tape that says... Or wait, no, maybe it's the opening to 5. That's opening... No, that's the opening to 4. Opens with, he gets the tape, and it says, Jigsaw's like, I'm dead, but I'm still gonna play the games. And then, the main story is about a cop who goes through doors. He keeps going through an unsecured door, and he wants to save everyone. This is definitely one of the weakest of the motives, but that's okay. And then, we have Donnie Wahlberg's character is back, and he is standing on a block of ice that if it melts Hoffman will be electrocuted and these big 
things of ice will slam onto Donnie Wahlberg's face. And there's a dude there who is basically like Zep and he's being blackmailed in order to do this or he'll die. And um, the police officer dude that keeps going through the unsecured doors has to drive around. Uh, he has to kill a pedophile. And he also has to, he has to save a lady that is getting scalped by Jigsaw. And at the end, he busts through the door, and the ice things slam Donnie Wahlberg, and he dies. But it doesn't electrocute. It electrocutes Hoffman. But then the plot twist when Hello Zep plays is that Hoffman was working for Jigsaw, and is the new disciple, apprentice, accomplice of Jigsaw, and was setting all of this up. And we also figure out that the events of Saw 4 took place at the same time as Saw 3. Okay, alright, I think I'm getting back on track. Not really. I don't, I think Saw... Saw 6 opens with them chopping themselves with the meat cleavers. So Saw 5 must open with the guy, one of, opens with one guy, he's got his mouth sewn shut, and another guy's got his eyes sewn shut, and they have to not kill each other, but one of them kills the other one. I forgot which one. I think the guy with his mouth sewn shut, because at the end he goes, ah, and rips this, the, uh, rips him open even though he probably should have done did that at the beginning of the trap and tell told the guy that he's just a victim like him but then saw five oh five saw five is the five people in the room and like a grenade is gonna go off with a bunch of nails if they don't all hide even though the hiding places are are extremely large and could fit multiple people because the whole point of the game is that if they work together they'll all be okay it's very similar to jigsaw in a few regards with th that they have to kind of work together and be honest with one another and the b plot is that jill tuck who is jigsaw's wife or was his wife gets a tape is that is that six or five she gets a tape oh i forgot Hang on. In Saw 4, I forgot to mention, there's a bunch of backstory and lore for Jigsaw, even though he died. He's got character development, folks. There's a guy, uh, Jill Tuck is Jigsaw's wife who worked at the hospital, and there's this crazy guy who slams open a door and actually kills uh, Jigsaw and Jill's baby in the womb. She has a miscarriage. Jigsaw later does his first trap on this man by putting knives in front of his face and he has to push his face through. Then in 5, we get the backstory of Hoffman. We learn that Hoffman's sister was killed and Hoffman set up the... Wait. Okay, the one with the... The one with the pit and the pendulum trap, when that that opens a movie. Which movie does that open with? I think that opens... That must open... F Wait. Well, because seven... Hold on, I'm going to figure this out. Seven opens with the two people with the saw blade and the girl, the love triangle trap. Six opens with them chopping the meat off their body and putting it on scales. Five then must open with... Okay, 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 I got it. Four opens with them with the... with the, um, the, the eyes and mouth sewn shut because the dude who is blackmailed that's keeping Hoffman and Donnie Wahlberg in the room is the dude with the mouth... That had his mouth sewn shut. Okay. Five opens with the pit and the pendulum trap. And we learn that the guy, despite crushing his hands, 
was going to die either way because it's not Jigsaw doing the trap, it's Hoffman. This is where we get Hoffman's backstory while the five people are, are trying to work together in the one uh, place. And Hoffman, he has a shotgun at his face and Jigsaw says, I'm the Jigsaw killer that you've been looking for. And he pulls the trigger, but the shotgun wasn't loaded. And then... Jigsaw recruits Hoffman and teaches him the right way because he saw that he got revenge on his sister's killer and he said that revenge is ta this tasteful and that he needs to rehabilitate people and so Hoffman becomes the new Jigsaw and then it ends with I forgot about the detective guy. Oh. There's a detective guy. And in the fourth movie... Fourth or third movie... He's trying to solve the things. And... Why, well, remember Billy the Puppet's head blows up. And it hits the his partner. And she goes to the hospital. And I also remember... That he has to give himself a tracheectomy with a pen because water's filling up in a box and Hoffman thinks that he died. That has to be four. Where's that five? Anyway, the ending is Hoffman's in a glass case and it lowers into the floor and... Hello Zep plays and the walls close in and crush the detective and he dies. Six is about insurance. <laughs> I need help. Six is actually pretty good. You have uh, a guy who's denying insurance coverage for people. Um... It was made during the Obama administration. That had something to do with it. And Jigsaw says Piranha. This is the one that opens with people. They have to cut. They have to cut enough off of their body and put it on scales. And whoever has a greater weight is the one who lives, and the other one dies. And this woman lives. And um. The insurance guy has to go through all these different trials of people that either he denied insurance for. It's his employees, but it, it, it plays the logic. It's smart where he has to basically use his company's policies against his own company. So, like, there's a guy who smokes, or there's an old woman versus a young man. And in theory, the, the young man should get coverage, but he doesn't have a family and the old woman does. There's the shotgun carousel trap. And at the end, there's Roderick Rules in a cage with his mom, and you realize that that's the the guy the guy who died without insurance's wife and son, and the son presses a button and kills the insurance guy. And at the end, uh, Jill Tuck, Jigsaw's wife, somehow has to kill Hoffman, and puts the bear trap on Hoffman. But Hoffman puts the bear trap in between these two bars and it opens up and he doesn't die. But his mouth's all funky. And he screams and that's the end. Saw 7 is definitely the worst one. Uh, the First of all, the blood mixes off. It looks pink. Second of all, the characters are very one note. There are only two good ideas in this movie. The first is that there is a Jigsaw support group with other characters from the previous movies and characters that we never saw before. There is the woman that cut the meat off her body and there's also a lady that hung over a bunch of lawnmowers and was hanging and had to knock her abusive like boyfriend off. I have no idea how she got there before the events of the two second clip we see in the movie. Uh, that's the first good idea and the second um, decent idea is a jigsaw survivor that actually lied about surviving and was never in a trap. He becomes the main punishment. Him and his other cronies, his publicist, his best friend, uh, and other people that lied for him to run this scam for many years or however long it was. 
Uh, Jigsaw tries to confront him at a book signing, but he doesn't take the warning, take any heed to it, and therefore he and his friends are a part of the traps, which with uh, some very vile ones, such as uh, a fish hook down the esophagus, that's just gross, um, and, and they lack all tension. Even the Hoffman scenes, there's a great Hoffman scene in Six. Same director, he's the editor of all the Saw movies, by the way, and uh, director of the upcoming Saw 10, or whenever I post this video. This video's, you know, in hype for Saw 10. I am looking forward to it, but uh, this, this franchise is very mixed, and Saw 7 is the worst. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, there was a very tense scene with them decoding Hoffman's fake voice. And, um, yeah, there's no tension in this movie, like, at all. Linkin Park's in the movie, uh, and he's racist, apparently, and then him and all of his racist friends die in a car accident. Uh, this, like, crazy car that's rigged up. He, he's super glued to the seat. Um, Hoffman subdues Jill Tuck, and then she gets put in the bear trap, and then she dies, and we actually see the bear trap get used for the first time. Uh, and her face like rips open. It's really gory and in 3D. And um, in the survivor group of Jigsaw survivors, Dr. Gordon's there and he says promotional DVD and he claps and it's very amusing uh, to me always. And um, you know that he is very, acting very creepy and by the end of the movie, plot twist, hello Zep. He is one of the pig people along with two other people that I assume were also at that support group. And uh, Hoffman is taken to the bathroom from the first movie and he's locked in there and we never hear from Hoffman again. Maybe we'll know what happens in Saw 10, uh, directed by the same guy who directed this one. Moving on, final two, Jigsaw and Spiral. I don't have a ton to say about either. S Jigsaw is basically a modern telling. Modern, I mean like 10 years older, uh, 10 years newer, fresher, I should say, than Saw Five, because it's basically the same thing, except buckets on their heads now. Uh, it's a lot sleeker, but it kind of lacks the charm. Um, the technology is more savvy, and Billy looks more upgraded, even though it's before the events of all the other ones. Plot twist, because there's a new killer that's copying the old killer, because he's an apprentice too. Okay another apprentice and he you see him put down with jigsaw the bear trap so he was there from the get-go before amanda before hoffman before dr gordon okay at least in spiral spiral uh with chris rock there's a copycat killer who uses a little pig puppet he's trying to kill the police because the police uh let his dad die i think samuel jackson's there too um, there's hot wax that goes on the lady's face, and the guy, his tongue gets ripped out in front of a train. Uh, I'm gonna spin like a spiral. I ain't got no room for no rival. And then Saw 10 takes place between Saw 1 and Saw 2, and I haven't seen it yet. I'm done.